Uh, am I going to do the intro with you here? I you think are. I will. What episode are we on? <laughs> 70. 70. We're on episode 70. Hey, Dylan! Welcome to episode 70 of the Clarity Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly, and today we're going to talk to a millennial about millennial <laughs> things. Clarity can only really exist in the light of truth. Branding just isn't a tactic. It's a lifestyle change. I'm excited today to introduce you to one of my favorite people, and I would say that even if he wasn't sitting here, but if he was listening, I'd say it still. If he wasn't listening, yeah. Maybe a little bit. I'm so happy to introduce you to a member of our team at Congruent. One of my favorite people, he's from the South, which means I like him more. Right, he'll def- let for for him the South is anywhere. We'll talk about the South in a second. <laughs> but uh, St is our director of photography, DP for you those in the industry, and I wanted to have him on the show today because not only is he a great DP, but he also has really great perspective on brand, on commerce, on consumer experience. And we had some conversations this week around a specific experience that he had with a brand, specifically a tire company. We'll get into that in a minute. And it's important, I thought, to share with everyone. I think you'll get value out of it because it really highlights the level of brand connection that is actually possible through intentional intentional deploying of things that are important to the buyer today. So we're going to talk about those things today. And uh, so, ST. Yes, sir. This is ST Davis, by the way. I didn't tell you his name. <laughs> ST Davis, welcome to the Clarity Compressed Thank Podcast. You. A first long time listener, first time caller. Take Welcome it. To, happy to be here. Very cool. <laughs> so, uh, why don't you tell just just give people like the sixty second background? Like, how did you end up here? And just kind of like what what's your history? And I, you better include the skateboarding stuff. Okay. <laughs> just saying. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I, I did skate. I skated for about ten years and went through that world and decided that uh, I could probably make a living without getting hurt. Well, you, you were sponsored too. Was, like a was, lot of people skate. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people skate for ten years. I was uh, briefly sponsored by uh, by Vans, a nice little shoe company, and. Uh, said, you know what, I got into the skateboarding kind of world and I got into sort of the video world and I kind of melded the two and ended up coming out on the video end and uh, started living and working in Nashville and did all of the country music scene there and got tired of country music and was looking for something different, something a little more fulfilling. And then uh, you guys up here in Syracuse said, we have congruent and it doesn't snow. Come on down. I never said that. (laughs) Just for the record, we flew him up here in the wintertime and I said, it's like this a lot. Now, granted, <laughs> it's easier to come in when you come and go, but like there's something about like that third month of snow. It was, yeah. You start to question your life decisions. It was a different experience. Once I finally got here and went through a full winter and realized I wouldn't see the sun for five months, it was a little. It's not quite five months. A little changing, a little six. Well, first of all, it's so awesome having you here. Thank you. The North is better because you're in it. <laughs> Let me just say. Um, Today, I want to talk about customer experience and brand connection through uh, a very specific method, and that method is text, right? The most of my phone's over there shooting that that angle, but we know we're addicted to our phones. We rely on them for just about everything, and so the most reasonable place that we're going to make a brand connection with a consumer is on the phone, Right. right, is through an experience. And in automotive, we talk about, well, how do we make this seem a more seamless experience? But this transcends automotive because my theory on brand, and I think it's played out over and over, and this, this situation will actually support it a little bit more, is that when you make a brand connection with somebody, you actually take them out of your competitor's sales funnels. Right, so everyone's always talking about the in-market shopper, and we have the sales funnel, and everybody who's consideration, you know, they're in the top, and they start to move their way down till they get to the purchase section, right? Like, well, I'm actually going to buy, and that's when people typically just try to bombard them with advertising and offers, and come in buy, buy, buy. But when you make a brand connection with somebody, and they they convert to your brand, they never even drop into that initial sales funnel because they just come to you. They don't have to go through the process. They don't shop offers. They don't see what else is out there because they've connected with you and you become part of who their identity is in, you know, related to whatever that aspect is. So ST drives uh, a really interesting vehicle and, and he's had several interesting vehicles since he's been here. So we'll, we'll get a little footage <laughs> and put it because this, this car, what is it? Tell us what it is. It is a 1979 MG Midget. 
79 was a good year. Sierra was, was born. Hey. Um, so in 1979, MG Midget, and it lives up to its name. It, yes, it does. <laughs> very, very small car. I think Tiny I think car. your hair sticks out the top. Over the, it's a <laughs> convertible. The yeah, yeah, so it's pretty awesome. He almost has to wear goggles. <laughs> but so we'll show some footage of the car. But you bought this car, definitely a really unique car, right? Mm. You wear it well, and you really care about it. You learn about it. You bought the manual. You're into mm. it. And you want to do something with the wheels, right? So tell me about how this story happened. Yeah, so I bought the car and uh, immediately sort of just started pouring into it and learning about it and figuring it out. And um, one of the first things I, I noticed were the wheels. Uh, one of the first thing I looked for when I was trying to customize it was figuring out like what set or what set of wheels I can kind of put on this thing. And I realized that there are only like two manufacturers of wheels for this for this vehicle and they all look the same. <laughs> so the first thing I said was, all right, well, let me try to find like a retailer or something like that who will give me something maybe a little bit different. And so I basically went online and just started typing in the bolt pattern, just trying to figure out what will even fit it. Mm -hmm. Went through all the forums and they were all kind of telling me about the same thing. And a lot of those forums were right, You started on Google, right? Started on Google. Yep. Immediately, first place I went. Yeah. Didn't think to look anywhere else. Went through the forums and they were all kind of selling about the same thing. And so I was like, okay, well, where can I find this locally? Maybe I can go and take a look at them. Right. If I have someone who can offer me something different, mm -hmm. well, I'm interested in that. Yep. Let me let me talk to them. And it'd be nice to see it. It'd be nice to see yeah, it. Yeah, right. So, um, I mean, from that point, I went online uh, and searched uh, just for different kinds of wheels. And I found uh, the manufacturers of, of just certain kind of wheels, American mm -hmm. Racing, I think it was. And uh, they gave me a list of dealers in, their, in my area. So I, uh, I looked at the list and picked, you know, maybe a couple. And the first one I picked happened to be Dunn Tire. And so it was interesting because I was expecting, like, okay, I'm going to have to, like, send them an email. And I have already sent a couple of emails you and nobody had responded. Form, right, right. And then... Um, kind of resolved to that's just the way it that's is. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And I was, you know, I thought about calling a couple, but they're always a little... I always feel like I'm about to get sold something I don't really want. Yep. I didn't really want to call yeah. them because... There's a lot of hesitancy there. There's a lot of hesitancy. And it's interesting because the car is so small that a lot of the people you talk to already sort of off the bat think they know what what's best for you. And I'm sitting here with, you know, this full manual. You're on more informed everything. than most I'm, I'm people in informed. the country about this vehicle. Right, because they're, yeah. they're applying just almost a sort of generic sort of script to me. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't like that. And so I reached out to Dunn Tire and through their online, they had like an online form. And I thought I was kind of going through the same thing I'd already been through. Yep. But it was interesting because you could just put your phone number in and they would text you. And so I was like, oh, okay, let me let me try that out. Yep. So I, you know, put my name in there and put in, hey, I'm looking just for this kind of wheel or something in this style. Um, just let me know what you guys have, I guess. And I had done that with a couple other people through email, but this was the first sort of text-based right. one. Curious enough to try. Curious enough to try. And they gave me their hours. They immediately texted me, gave me their hours. Hey, we'll reply from, I think, like 7 a.m. or 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Yep. So I was like, okay, I'll look for a text around that time. It probably won't come. What time was this that you did this? Was it nighttime? I, yeah, I did this at probably like 7 or 8 at night. Okay. Um, right, and they set your expectation. They said, hey, thanks for texting. Yeah. We'll get back to you when we're... We'll when get back to you yep. whenever we uh, when we open. And I was like, okay, cool. So I remember waking up like the next morning <laughs> at like 7 a.m. And I already had a text. And it was from, you know, the guy was like, hey, this is Harry. I think the text sort of read, hey, this is Harry. Um, thanks for reaching out to us at Dunn. Um, can you tell us a little bit of more, uh, the wheels you're looking for yeah. and maybe the bolt pattern and stuff like that? Yep. And I was like, oh, okay. And I love that it wasn't so, like, I need to just fill it out form by form. Yep. Conversational. It, it was conversational. It was yep. like, you know, what are you looking for? What, what are you interested in? And so I'm texting him, yeah, I'm looking for maybe something in, you know, a brushed sort of look. This is the bolt pattern. Here are the specs for it. You know, what do you have? And he texts me back, yeah, we got a couple like that. Uh, you know, what kind of manufacturer are you going to? What are you looking for? We can try to find some yep. in this world. We can try to find some of these guys make. You know, 
I tell you what, you just look on the site and then yep. let us know which ones you like and we'll figure it out. So he knew what he was talking about. Knew what he was talking he about. He listened and you felt listened he to. Definitely listened. And listened. it was conversational. It was very conversational. It wasn't somebody who just like is coming into their call center in the morning that yeah. like, oh, I'm on the Dun Tire account today. Let me right. read the procedure. Like this is somebody who knew what you were talking about. Yeah, it wasn't so formal. Yeah. And that's what I really liked about it because, yeah. I mean, even within that sort of community and I think in a lot of kind of places, that sort of formal, almost like I'm directly talking to a call center and I'm yep. being read a script yep. is really unattractive to me. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like, okay, well, I'm just being placed into a system. Yeah. Whereas I'm not doing that. I'm not talking to Dunn. I'm talking to Harry. Right. Harry Harry is a person. Harry's a person. He knows who you are as a person, right? And knows what you want, knows what you like with, regarding the wheels. All right, let me, let me hit the pause button real quick. Yeah. And so how old are you? 25. 25, right? Mm -hmm. So you are in... The target demographic for retail, right? Like mm. dead center. Like people want you to think the experience is good yeah. because you are the, the best definition of what the expectation is for retail experience. What are some of the companies that you, the retail companies that you have interacted with that you've enjoyed or that you would just come top to mind? Like, hey, this is a company that I think treats, would treat me like I want to be treated. Let's see. So I think off the top, in terms of like lack of friction. Yep. I would say Amazon was a big one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, I don't mind paying a little bit more because I know what I'm getting from Amazon, which is really frictionless. Yep. Um, and everything's sort of cohesive and their customer service was usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, in terms of more friction, um, I can remember going to Walmart and absolutely hating the experience going through Walmart. Going digitally? <laughs> through their... Digitally, non -dig I mean, walking in, both both yep. of them, really. Okay. I mean, if I go through digitally, none of it seems to, how do I say, I guess, um, there's a lot that they sort of ask of you on the front end, and yep. I don't feel like I'm getting a good return out of it okay. on the back end. Yep. When I walk into the store, and we're, I mean, we're still talking about, like, say, tires or something like that. Yep. There's this essence of, like, I know more than you. Yep. Let me tell you what you right. want. Right, right. Because it's kind of a specific thing. And if they're not listening, they don't know that you actually know something about it. Right. And it's like, hey, I've measured this stuff. I have all the dimensions. I know all the specifications. Just let me tell you what I want. And if you can you can do that for me, then great. And if not, then I'll just go somewhere else. I think there's a good lesson here, for especially for automotive viewers, because there used to be a time in automotive when the dealer had all of the information. Mm -hmm. They had it all. If someone knew about like specs and pricing and all that, like they had to be really into it. Like they're really rare. Mm -hmm. But now oftentimes people come in with more of an understanding of what they want and more of an understanding a lot of times of what that dealer actually has in stock or the new model than the dealer does. Mm -hmm. And I think the opportunity is there for a salesperson or an advisor to really talk past that, mm. you know, and in your case, you're like, that'd be a major turnoff because right? you've done the work already. Like I know my stuff. Like now you feel like they're wasting your time. Yeah. What company do you feel understands you like that you see as a reflection of you, yourself, your own values, your own like mentality mm. about life? Is there one that comes to mind? We're like, yeah, that's a company. And I know there's probably several because you are a brand guy mm. and, you know, you're across like fashion and automotive and like, you know, you have a wide range. Well, of you know, interests. I think it's kind of interesting, Paul, because I don't know if there's one specific one, but it's it's sort of all the ones that don't cause friction in my life. And I don't, you know, I, I look at more of like, oh, hey, I had a negative experience with that one particular company. Yep. I'm open to everybody else now. Okay, so the friction is what, like, you don't want to be on the bad list. Yeah. That's, right, you're that's on that really list as far as if you have a good shot or a good at bat if you're not on the on that list if where you're, you're like, no, I think it's going to be hassle. Yeah. Cool. As the second I, I feel like, oh, there's some kind of hassle or I'm being sold something I don't want. Yep. Or you're really, essentially, not listening to me. Yep. Well, I'm just going to put you in that bucket. Yep. And I'm going to go to every other company that's going to listen to me and understand what I actually want. Yep. And then give me that in a customer give me that sort of customer service experience mm -hmm. in a way that I, I kind of can consume. So it's really like, I'll go to almost any company that's not you yeah, know, that. Right, I got you. I'm more open to this other world. Than so I'm gonna do those. some rapid fire. What's more important, your time or your money? My time. I'm willing to spend money more than, than the time. What What's more important in, in a company? Is it feeling like 100% like you, you can trust the product you're gonna get? 
or the fact that you feel good about buying that product? Like you feel good about the company you're buying it from? Um, mostly feel good about the company I'm buying from. Let me jump back. One of the places I hate going to is Harbor Freight. So where I live, there's a Harbor Freight and literally across the street is a Home Depot. Mm -hmm. And every time I've, <laughs> every time I go into Harbor Freight, I've noticed like three things. One, the doors open and close very slowly. And I only <laughs> noticed, I only noticed how slowly the doors open and close when I was trying to leave Harbor Freight and someone was hounding me about buying something. And it felt like the doors were taking an eternity. <laughs> it's like a dream where you just can't up. run. I can't move. Just every single time. And the products, I, I didn't quite like. I didn't think okay. they were quite as fear. I would literally play double just not to have to deal with that. Not to be hassled. Not to be hassled. Not to waste time. Getting back to Harry. Back to Harry. Back to Harry. It kind of, the way you told me the story, like you kind of, you went back and forth and realized that, you know, there weren't really wheels that were going to be a fit. Yeah. But now Harry's kind of your guy. You feel a connection to Harry. I do. I Why? Do. And you feel a connection to Harry like, hey, I'm, so Google, Android, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with this. I use an iPhone, but on the Android system, you've been texting back and forth with him. And what does the phone ask you? Now, this is the phone's built-in ecosystem. iOS asks you what? Yeah. So the first thing the phone asks me whenever I receive a text from Heavy or Harry is, uh, do I want to add him as a contact? Because it knows you're texting with him. Because it knows I'm texting the person, yeah. Did you add him? I did. As Harry, like Harry Dunlap or something okay. like that. Okay. So Harry Dunn. I think that is... Right, because now he's your guy. Because now he's my guy. Right, so you have a tire question. Who are you going to pull up? I'm going to go to Harry. You don't have to go to Google. Him. Yeah. You're going to text Harry. Are, are you shopping price anymore? No. <laughs> right? Nah. You're not even shopping price. So back to supporting the fundamental thesis that when you make a brand connection, which Harry has made mm -hmm. on behalf of Dunn. Yeah. Right? But it's Harry. Harry's your guy. Yeah. Because I'm thinking more of, oh, I'm just talking to Harry. Like. Whoever, right. whoever Harry represents. Right, he's got whatever. resources behind him. Yeah. Right? Harry now is your guy. You are no longer in the buyer consideration funnel for Mavis Tire and Goodyear and Firestone out of all those sales funnels. Yeah. Right to Harry. Right to Harry. Now, do you even know what the Dunn Tire logo looks like? I assume it's done. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, like, when we say, like, oh, my logo is my brand. Well, I've never been either. You've never even been to one? I've never been to a Dun Tire. I didn't know, I didn't really like see a Dun Tire. Uh, maybe they're in the South, I don't know. I've, this is the first time I've ever been. Right, but you'll buy from them. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy from them. Back to your logo is not your brand. Your storefront is not your brand, right? Mm -hmm. The connection is the brand. And in this case, it was so unique, I thought we needed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like, thanks for giving us some of your time. I know you're like editing and making yeah. awesome things in there. <laughs> so, yeah, no problem. ST Davis, that's gonna be it for the podcast today. And again, thesis. Brand connection matters more than everything else because it's human to human. That's it. If it's a human interaction, you're winning. <laughs> Thank you for listening and watching to episode 70. Um, you, you know my position. I am always incredibly appreciative for anybody who's willing to spend any of their time with us, with us, with this community. Um, I'm loving the DMs and reaching out. If you have any questions, comments, uh, need to run something by me or have a brand related question, please just hit me up on the DM, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Facebook's the, the harder one for me. I don't know why it just is. But uh, Instagram, LinkedIn are where I spend a lot of time. Twitter too. So uh, that's it. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope if you're in charge of any kind of brand or brand connection or you run an organization, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight into the minds of the consumer in this day and age. Have an, have an amazing week. <laughs> We're going to keep that. The last part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can say goodbye too. Oh, goodbye America. America. Oh, this, this is reaching America. He's, he's right? campaigning. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. You got it.